I want to sit next to him. God, I want to see the DVD of my life. I want to see all those. I want to sit down. How many years? 40 something years. And I want to watch all those times when angel came and protected me from something. And I didn't even know. I want to see all those times when you gave the command, go help that guy. Go help that poor fellow. I want to see all those times when demons were coming at me and trying to attack me. I want to see all those times when you gave the order and said, no, not him. I want to see the times. I want to watch the video. I want to see the times when I was supposed to die and you gave the decree, no. Trust me with your, with your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Then said he unto the person in charge of his vineyard. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. Look, these three years I came looking for fruit on this fig tree and I didn't find any. Jesus said, cut it down. Why burden the ground? Thank you. Why did you use up the ground? Why waste space in the ground? You, you, all of you, with your beautiful selves, all of you all came from dirt and you're going back to dirt. Even if you get inside of a casket, even if they seal the casket up, bugs are getting inside the casket. Somehow, some way, even if the casket is made of metal, the metal will rust and the casket will decompose and it expose your body to the dirt. Anyhow you do it, you're still going back to dirt. So from the time you came from dirt till the time you're going to return to dirt, why did you even use up the ground? The ground that you came from, the ground that you're walking on, the ground that you came from and the ground that you're walking on, you're going back in it. Jesus saw a fig tree. This fig tree wasn't producing any figs. And he said, by now, this tree should have had fruit. He said, I gave it a space of time. Still no fruit. He gave the commandment to kill it. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? I need your prayers. Why, why, does, why does this tree even waste time in the ground if it's not producing any fruit? If we look at our own life and ask the same question, why am I even taking up space on the earth? If you responded with your accomplishments, even the accomplishments that benefit your family, you might have missed a bigger fulfillment of your life. What if your life is bigger than what you can see? What if your life is bigger than what you can immediately see or foresee? What? What about your life? What about your life justifies the time that you take up the space that you came from dirt to dirt? What about the life that continues after this one? What about the life that's beyond this current life? What if your life includes an eternity with God? What if your life includes an eternity with your creator? How cool would that be to never be separated from God? That's why Proverbs says, Listen very carefully. Proverbs says in, in chapter one, verse 10, it says, if sinners entice you, if sinners attract you, make a pathway so you don't consent, so you don't agree, make a pathway and get out of there. If sinners entice you, run. Whatever it is, don't, don't do it. If it's the wrong people doing the wrong things, that makes sense. If it's people you agree with doing the wrong thing, it's time to go. But years ago, my wife and I went to hang out with some coworkers after work. These were your friends. And we were, they were eating and we were playing some cards. We was having a grand time. Everything was great. But right after dinner, they start pulling out some flask type things and opening it up and putting some white powder on the table. I'm like, oh, that's it. Time to go. And you see these people at work, you know, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're good, great people. But what happened? They, they kept that part of their life out, which is good. I'm glad. But we went into their territory. Proverbs 4, 27 says, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. What that's saying is don't try to find a way to make wrong right. Simply remove thy feet from evil. That's what the Bible says. Get out of there. Go to another place. Get away from evil. Why? Why is it so bad to be around sin, 
even if you're not engaging in the sin what person can say according to proverbs 20 verse 9 i have made my heart clean i did that i am pure from sin if you can say that raise your hand my hands are down we know that god watches over the sparrow we sing that song we know that the hair on our head are numbered not just the locks every single piece of hair is numbered job said god counts my steps do you not watch over my sin? What does that mean? If God is counting every step I make on his earth, do you think God is unable to see my sin? This is his earth that you're walking on, that he created, and we created you. You think he doesn't see everything that you do? Do you think he would make a human on earth and forget about making a way that he can see every action, every behavior that you have? People today want you to preach smooth things. Smooth things. They go to church to be inspired. They go to church to be motivated. Preachers today still have the unfortunate task of having to deal with sin. 2023, preachers still got to deal with sin. In a world where everything is okay. In a society where people believe they're right. In their own eyes. I'm so glad God gets the final say so. Proverbs 21 verse 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord ponders the heart. See, God knows exactly what's in my heart. And I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you what God says about my heart is more devastating than the grade I can give myself. I can promise you that what God sees in my heart will be nothing compared to what I say is in my heart. Unless I confess I'm nothing. I'm a flawed piece of dirt. Do you want to hear, do you want to hear what God says about my heart? What about yours? Mm -hmm. You want to hear what he says about your heart? Forget about what you say or what you think. Can you handle the truth from God Almighty about what he searched and found in your heart? When God searches my heart, he finds dirt. He finds discrepancies. He finds violations and variations and, and violations based on his commandments. Because that's what he bases it on. This is his word. This is what you've done. This is his word. This is what's in your heart. This is his word. And these are your actions. This is his word. And this is what you're thinking about. If I'm a liar, it's within my heart. And that's only a problem. Me being a liar is only a problem because the commandments forbid me from being a liar. That's how important the commandments are. And please don't think you can't keep the commandments. That's a trick from your enemy. There are people recorded living holy and according to the commandments. Jesus is one. Paul, after his conversion, is two. Zacharias and his wife, that's four. Right? You can live holy. And holiness ain't for old folk. The scriptures say, I have written unto you. I'm in uh, 1 John 2, 14. I have written unto you, young men, because you're strong. You, you young people, you can travel. You can use technology. You can speak the language of other young people. So don't wait until you get older to give your life to the Lord. Notice I said, give your life to the Lord. I'm not asking you. The Bible is not asking you. God is not asking you to live your life and then add some God to it. God says he wants to be God of all, or he doesn't want to be God at all. God wants to completely control and rule and reign and set up and abide and take over your life. Give your life to God. God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to live? Don't wait until you get older because tomorrow is not promised. Who told you the sun is going to rise tomorrow? Who promised you there will be another day? God has a desire for you today. And you are the only one amongst your peers. You are. That can show them how to live holy. How they going to know? The way you dress means a lot. You think people don't notice that you don't have a potty mouth? People watch everything. They watch everywhere you go. They watch what you dress. They watch everything you do. You're the only one in your circle that can tell people God is coming back. No one else will hear that. No, they won't hear it from nobody else. People don't just walk down the street and stumble into a church anymore. You have to invite them and compel them to come. Now, not limited to sin. All right, we got sin down packed. We know it's sin. Let's, let's not limited to sin. There are some things that specifically bad for you just you there's some things that i may struggle with that you don't have to stay away from okay 
in Ecclesiastes 37, 27, it says, look at your life, you know, your life from dirt to dirt. Look at your life. Now consider your soul in your life. What's bad for you? What's evil in your life? And when you figure that out, don't give into it. Stay away from it. Remove your fruit from it. Verse 28 says, everything ain't beneficial for everybody. That's what it's saying. And every person doesn't take pleasure in everything. I don't want to drink. I don't want to go to the club. That's not my thing. But some people struggle with that kind of stuff. That's why the scripture says, prove your soul and see what's evil for your soul. And don't give that to your soul. Here, John, he's on orientation day. He got orientation day. He's up in heaven. And, and this is his first day. And he asked the angel, hey, these people, let's get going in heaven. Who? Who are these people? The angel told him, oh, uh, th this, this is what the saints been waiting on. Th th these are they, th these people right here, these are the folk that keep the commandments of God. That's who the, the people going in heaven, that's who they are. They kept, they, they, they kept the commandments. And now we know there are people that don't have faith in Jesus. We know that. My question for you today, the people who don't have faith in Jesus, will they be a part of this group that John saw? on orientation day no they can't because the bible says that these people are the people who have faith in jesus so if these people are the people that have faith in jesus do you think that these people who don't keep the commandments you see where i'm going we know there are people who don't keep the commandments will they be a part of that group that john saw yes or no that means you got to keep the commandments that's in revelation well i mean that's 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 the end of, that's the end of the book what are satan's devices first first let me ask let me back up let me change that what is the goal of satan his goal has been and will continue to be to get us to disobey god he has a simple task just disobey god that's it that's all you got to do it don't matter which one just you can pick just one because all you gotta do is lie and guess what all liars will have their place special place there's a special place for you just for one lie that's it the bible says if you lie you have a special place in hell in the lake of fire there's one 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 lie that's all watch this all you have to do is disobey god satan said zero words to adam pause it for a minute i want y'all to think about that satan didn't say anything to him but he got him to sin what was his device second corinthians 2 11 says lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant to his devices okay hey eve don't talk to him don't talk to that guy hey adam don't listen to Eve. <laughs> Move your foot, Eve or Adam. Get away. Let Satan get an advantage of us. Because we're not ignorant of his devices. Who is we? Who is not ignorant of his devices? Is your cell phone a device? Is the internet a tool that the, Satan, that the devil can use? Is TikTok an avenue? Is Tinder a way? only fans is that a device or is that an advantage is that a way that the devil can use is that an opportunity for satan to get an advantage of you while you're living from dirt to dirt are these devices yes i'm not saying there's anything wrong with these devices but is there a way that he can get in there you you woke up this morning in consumption of all of his devices you arose not to the beckoning call of your savior but to fleshly pleasure that's why you reach for your phone first, God after. Yeah. Why would God command you to do something that cannot be done? He's a holy God. You can live separate from sin. Yes, you can. And you can live holy. You can live a life that makes God happy. Yes, you can. But you got to wake up right. You got to reach for him first. You got to reach for God and say, God, you are my desire. You are what I want. This day is the day that I want to spend with you. You are all I need, God. When you wake up in the morning and you establish that real connection with God, what more do you need? What more do you need? But God, before I got saved, of course, there, there were scriptures I didn't understand, of course. There's, there's a ton of scriptures I still don't understand. But there were some scriptures I did not like. Is it okay for me to say that? I just didn't like some scriptures. Here's one of them. This, this one irritated me. Ephesians 5 27 says God is coming back for a people that is without spot or wrinkle I hated hearing that or should I say my flesh 
hated hearing that Bef before salvation my flesh hated hearing that because i know what that means it means i gotta separate from sin who's saved that still hate hearing that who saved show me the saved person that still hates to hear that you got to separate from sin and i will show you a non-saved person <laughs> i will show you a person that's not saved because in order to be saved you have to separate from sin that's just the way that goes i want to be part of that glorious church that john saw we all do but it says we must be holy and no spot i have to come up to that i can't bring that down paul told timothy hey timothy follow after righteousness and keep this commandment without spot and be unrebukable until God comes back. That's what you got to do, Timothy. That's how you be a part of that group. Thank God for a preacher. God bless you, man of God. Thank God for a preacher that tells you to live holy. We ain't got no many, that many of those people no more. A man of God that tells you to, holy, to live holy cares about your soul. And you only got one. Thank God for a preacher that shows you in the word that you got to keep the commandments. He's trying to get you with that group. He's on your side. He's trying to get you with that group that John saw going to heaven. That's that's who you that's the man of God that you want to sit under. Before you were born, before your mama met your daddy, or before your daddy met your mama, there was a plan for you to live holy and without blame. Watch this. In Ephesians 1, 4, it says, according as he has chosen us, God chose us in him before the foundation of, war, of the world to do what? That we should be holy. He already chose you to be holy. Don't tell me what you can't do if God already picked you and chose you to do exactly that. The Bible says that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's in your Bible. That Bible existed before I was born. Why would God have such a plan and it can't be carried out? Is God not going to get what he wants? Will there be people in the end that lives holy? Of course there'll be. Will there be people when the Lord returns that kept the commandments? Of course there will be. Will that be you? God chose you to be holy before he created the foundations of the world. And all you have to do is surrender. That's it. Who caused the first animal to be slaughtered? Whose fault was that? Why did an innocent animal that didn't sin have to die? Why did the Lord have to kill the first animal? In Hebrews 9.22, it says, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Sin is the cause of it all. Sin brought death into the world. Sin got the 12 tribes sent to slavery, and your sin got your Savior murdered on a tree. My sins got my Savior murdered on a tree. That's what sin does. What's the problem in our community? Sin. What's the problem with the world? Sin. God created this earth. This is sad. And, and 24 hours a day, in all the hours of the day, in all the minutes that's included in the day, God has to witness somebody sinning in the world that he created to be holy. Did you know some sicknesses is caused by sin? Yeah, sin is destructive. It's corrosive. It's not beneficial. It will separate you from God. And it doesn't pay well because the wages for sin, the payment you get for sin is your last enemy, death. Sin is your enemy. That's the purpose of sin, to kill you. That's the purpose of sin, to steal from you. That's the purpose of sin, to destroy you. The payment of sin, the payment that you get for sin, still death. That has not changed. The word death means separate, separate, separate. The natural death simply means your soul has separated from your body. That's why when you die, they just take your body and they fling it back in the dirt because it has no value. Once your soul has been separated from your body, your body is worthless. It is sin that causes a separation from a holy God. I'm so glad God got a gift for me. I'm so glad that I don't have to be a slave to sin. 
I'm so glad that there is a pathway, thank you, baby, for salvation through Jesus who wants, Jesus wants to help me to live holy. That, that's the purpose of the comforter. The Holy Ghost comes to help us live free from sin because sin brings consequences. It brings shame. It brings problems. We, we, we all watch sin destroy people's families before. We've all seen that. We've seen sin cause strife and sin makes you commit other sin. One sin will make you commit another sin. You know a thief that won't lie? You know a person that drink that won't cuss? Do you know a crackhead that won't steal? Can I say crackhead? Show me a person that go to a strip club that won't masturbate. What consequences do you suffer that you could have avoided simply by staying away from sin? Why play around with it? Why harbor it around you? Why hang with people that sin? You want to hear something scary? And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, whoever it is, guy or girl, will I erase out of my book. That's what it means when he says blot you out. That's why David is chasing after God. Hey, Lord, wait. Please don't go. Wait. Don't, don't push me away from your presence. Don't, don't, don't take yourself away from me. Come back, God. Come back. God, please don't separate from me. Because David figured out. He figured out it's the worst thing that can happen. That's why he said, don't cast me away from your presence. Don't take your spirit away from me, God. What happens? If God takes his spirit away from you. Oh, but who? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Romans 8.38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor powers nor things now nor things in the future Romans 8.39 says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Did you notice it didn't say sin? Did you notice it didn't say you? Why didn't it say sin? The reason the scriptures list the things that can't separate us and leaves out you is because you can separate you from God. Yes, you can. And sin is the catalyst to do it. Now, identify that device that Satan will use to get you to sin so that you can be separated from God and stay away from it. Isaiah 59, 2 says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Now what? Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. I told you, you can separate you from God. How do you get kicked out of paradise? How is that even possible? How do you have access? How, how can you roam around freely? We, we get excited if we take a vacation to here or there, right? We get excited, we can go here or there. You, you, you can go wherever you want, anytime you want, and do whatever and stay as long as you want. How are you in ownership position of the entire world and mess that up? Hey, Adam, you big dummy. How do you and me have access to heaven? Do we have access to heaven? And we mess up our future with God. How do we do that? This is what God sees when he sees sin. It's disgusting. It's repulsive to him. It stinks. It makes him sick. Don't let him see you like this. No hours of the day. Sin ought to vex your spirit. It should bother you. It should. It should disgust you. How do you watch that stuff on your phone and it don't bother you? This filth that you have access to, it should make you sick. If somebody offered you $1 million to drink this, don't do it garbage water don't even consider it don't even give it a thought it's way more toxic than you think that's why ephesians 4 27 says never give place to the devil 
Don't allow him to get his nasty foot in the door. Don't give him an opportunity. Not saying Judas wasn't a bad dude. He, he wasn't a bad dude. I'm not, I'm not saying he wasn't a bad dude. He was a bad dude. But I got a question about Judas. Judas naturally wanted freedom. Just He just wanted freedom. Freedom from the Roman invasion of Jerusalem. The Romans that came in, they took over Jerusalem. He just wanted freedom from that. Is it wrong for Judas to want the Holy Land and remain holy? No, nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to take up for the guy. Please hear me out. What if Judas simply got the timing wrong? What if he got Jeremiah's prophecy right, but way too early? What if he got the current lamb confused with the coming lion? All right, here's Judas. When the Lord came and got Judas, Judas probably thought, oh, shuck it, shuck it now. This is it. The Messiah has come to deliver us out of this Roman occupation. Because Jeremiah did say in, in chapter 30, verse 10, it says, therefore, don't be scared. O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be discouraged, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and your children from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. What if Ju Judas simply wanted to be a revolutionary? I want to help. I want to be a part of this plot. I want to be in ministry. I, I want to see the Messiah wreck shop. What would it What would it look like to see the Messiah save his people from the land of the captivity? This is what Judas wanted. He wanted to see what this would be like. He thought this is what was going on. This is what was going to happen. But what drew Judas into this place? What What drew him in here? What made Judas go go talk to these people? What made Judas go into this place to talk to these people about getting Yeshua locked up? Why, why did he have to have a comment? What made him want to go from hanging with Jesus and seeing his miracles and, and seeing people get raised from the dead and all? What made him turn from that to go get him? He didn't need the money. You went there to because you needed to move the Lord out of the way. That's what you wanted. In Matthew 26, it said, Judas asked the chief priests, hey, what you going to give me? Tell me what you going to give me and I'll give him to you. And they made a deal with him for 30 pieces of silver. And Judas, watch this word, consented. He consented. He should have shunned the very appearance of evil. He should have never entertained the thought of any sinful act. Judas, you big dummy, you just gave the devil a place. You should have never walked through those doors. That's where it started. You should have never talked to those people. Dude, you just gave the devil a place. You opened a door of, of opportunity for him just by being there. And why aren't you accountable? Why didn't anybody know where you're at? The scripture says in Psalms 2 verse 9, the Messiah will come and break them with a rod of iron. The Messiah shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. It is here that Judas gets confused. I've seen your work miracles, God. I've seen your power. The scripture says the Messiah is coming to reign and rule with an iron rod. But well, when exactly are you going to destroy our enemies? What do you mean turn you out the cheek? What do you mean blessed is the meek? I, I thought you was a lion from the tribe of Judah. What, what is all of this, this nice talk? Listen to this commandment. If an ox shall push down and kill a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their masters, guess how much? Are y'all reading that? Guess how much? 30 pieces of silver. Judas didn't even know he was fulfilling prophecy and keeping the law. He reduced the value of the Messiah Jesus to a manservant, which is exactly what God wanted him to do. That's why Jesus washed your feet. You would think that after Jesus washed Judas' feet, you would think Judas would have changed his mind. You'd think he would have a heart of compassion for him. This was, his, this was the best chance you had to wash the Lord's feet. You missed your chance to worship. Think about that. Have you ever missed a chance to worship? Wherever you live, whatever you're doing, wherever you work, is there any worship permeating from that place within that, that acre of land that you're standing on? Is there any worship coming up from that place? You could change that. The Bible says God made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So Jesus is saying, you ain't insulting me by, by taking 30 pieces of silver and by that calling me a servant. I'm telling you I'm a servant. I come here to serve your penalty for sin. And I'm setting an example for you to be a covenant servant. And you missed it. 
Judas got the prophecies about the Messiah coming to reign. He got that right, but he missed the ones about him coming to be a servant, to teach us how to be a servant and keep the covenant. Jesus is celebrating Passover. John laying on Jesus' shoulder. He, 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 that's Jesus' favorite, right? He's, he's hanging out, he's laying on Jesus' shoulder, and he says, uh, which one of these jokers is going to betray you? Do you really want to know the truth? Do you really want to understand prophecy? Do you know what to do when you discover the truth? When Jesus told him, he said, well, just wait. I'm going to get my bread. I'm going to dip it in the oil. And the person that dipped it in the oil with me, that's him. Notice Jesus didn't tell him, when you find out, don't say anything. Don't jump up and let everybody know it's him. How did John know to stay still? If you were John, wouldn't you want to go choke Judas? Just grab his neck and just squeeze it. But not if you know the scripture. Look what you would be doing. You would know this has to take place because of your own sin. I have to let him go on this cross because I'm a mess. This lamb named Jesus got to die. So that I can have eternal life and never be separated from him. And Judas dipped his piece of bread. The moment he did that, it was too late. The Bible says that's when Satan entered him. Who invited Satan to the dinner? Who invited Satan to Passover dinner? Satan is not omnipresent. What was he doing there? How did he get in? Who invited him? And who gave him a place? This problem didn't start today. It started when you gave the devil a place so satan is there now he's there and he's just sitting around waiting i guess then this ain't no low-ranking demon either that entered into him it was satan himself and as soon as satan entered him jesus dismissed he dismissed him immediately told satan get out of my face hurry up and go do whatever you got to do hey judas this is the exact moment that you allowed you to be separated from god this is the exact moment that you allowed you to be separate from your God. And I'm speaking to every person that can hear my voice, every person watching this. Don't ever get here. Don't ever give the devil a place. Don't mess with sin. Please don't give the devil a place. Stay away. Move away. Hang up the phone. Turn off the TV. Do whatever you got to do so you don't get separated from your God. From the time Judas was born, the time he came out of the dirt, to the time Judas went in the dirt, we don't know about any good that Judas We don't know about any good that Judas ever done. We don't know about any fruit he produced. All the world remembers is his sin. Jesus said it would have been good for Judas ever. What was the sin? What was the sin that was so bad? Was it because he betrayed Yeshua? No, Peter did that same day. Before the sun came up, Peter did that. <laughs> we know the shedding of innocent blood is a sin. All right, got that. But besides that, there's two things that he did. One is he gave place to the devil. The Bible says don't do that, so you just broke the law. He gave place to the devil. He did that by living in the flesh. The scripture says never give place to the devil. Number two, watch this. He says he was enticed by sin and he consented. Being enticed by sin is one thing, but then he consented. Eve was enticed and she consented. Adam was enticed and he consented. That's why the Bible says, figure out what entices you and don't allow your sin near it, your soul to go near it. Don't allow your soul to go near sin. Fight against your flesh every day. There's some days I go stand in the mirror and be like, I can't stand. I hate your guts because you're trying to send me to hell. You're not going to feel it. You're not going to feel the pain. I can't stand you. That's why I'm going to starve you to death. That's a real saint. I'm going to starve you to death. I'm going to fast all day, every day till you act right. That's how you want to live. Hold it. I'm going to stick my, I'm going to, your face, I'm going to stuff it in this Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to live holy. I want to please God. I want to see his face in peace. I want him to be happy with me when he comes back. The Bible says, figure out what entices you and don't allow your soul near it. Fight against your flesh every day. Take those things that's in your flesh and kill it. If my flesh die, I want my soul to live. If my flesh, if, I, if I'm separated from this flesh, I want my soul to be with God. 
I'm not going to live and I'm not going to give the devil a place. I'm not going there. No, no, no. No, I'm not watching that. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not repeating that. No, I don't want to listen to that. I want to be holy. I don't want any spots. God, take these blemishes from me. Move them, God. Help me, Jesus. Make me better, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I want to please you, Jesus. Yes, my flesh is powerful. I know that. I know my flesh is powerful. I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want you to give the order to cut me down and ask, why is he taking up space in the dirt? I don't want you to say that to me, God. Let your word search my soul, God. And whatever you find, I'll repent, God. I'll stop doing it. I won't do it no more, God, because I want to be just like you, Jesus. I want to be your servant. I want to keep your covenant. Send your word, God. So I'll, 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 I'll obey. I'll obey. Send your power, God. Send your power, God. Say, I need your power because this flesh is, is powerful, God. I need the power of the Holy Ghost to rule, rest, and abide inside of me so I can overcome the power of the devil, so I can overcome the power of my flesh, so I can overcome my own proclivities, God. I need it so I can live holy, God. God, I want to live holy. Send an anointing, God, so I'll stay under the shadow of the Almighty, God. Send, God. God, send your word so I'll keep my mind stayed on you, God. Then I'll be in perfect peace, Lord. Then I'll see your face in peace, God. Then I'll be a part of that group. I'll be a part of that group that kept the faith. I'll be a part of that group that kept the commandments. They kept their integrity. I, I, I don't, I don't want to be here when destruction comes. I don't, I don't want to be cut down. I don't want to be separated from you, God. I will never, ever allow me to be separated from God. I'll do whatever I have to do. I give up everything I got to give up. I live under a vine. I got to walk away from everybody because I just want to live holy. I just want to see Jesus. I just want to spend some time with him. I want to sit next to him. God, I want to see the DVD of my life. I want to see all those. I want to sit down. How many years? 40 something years. And I want to watch all those times when angel came and protected me from something. And I didn't even know. I want to see all those times when you gave the command, go help that guy. Go help that poor fellow. I want to see all those times when demons were coming at me and trying to attack me. I want to see all those times when you gave the order and said, no, not him. I want to see the times. I want to watch the video. I want to see the times when I was supposed to die and you gave the decree. No. And I also want to see the times. This is for my own sake. When it benefited me, when I decided I want to live holy. When I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I want to see the times when you said, hold that consequence. Don't let that happen to him because he kept the faith, he kept the faith and he kept the commandments. God, I want to see your face in peace. That's all I want. And I don't ever want to be separated from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you haven't given your life to the Lord, today is the day to surrender your life. Can you click the